watching Dukas Copy TV. Today we're tackling sports, specifically football. Now don't worry, I'm not going to give you a rundown of Aston Villa's latest Premier League performance, uh, but we're looking at investment and money and the role it plays in sports, specifically football. Well, joining me in the studio, who knows all about this, is Christopher Hill, who's the CEO of Criscan Management. Christopher, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me. Uh, now, uh, First thing I want to look at, I know that you've dealt with uh, quite a few sports, uh, specifically the players um, and investment there, but I'd like to look specifically here at um, football and um, I'd like to ask you, are clubs struggling um, to remain competitive in this current environment? You may remember uh, a few years ago, a couple of years ago even, we saw the IPO of Manchester United, we saw uh, their IPO. Um, fail a little bit, but they, in the end, got something out of it. Uh, well, are clubs struggling, do you think, at the moment a little? Yes, um, clubs are struggling, and if you look at Portugal, Italy, Spain, the UK, and you look at clubs in general across the entire number one team to number 20th team in the Premier League, and vice versa, uh, not everybody's being paid on time. So teams are struggling to pay their players, players are going to go on strike, and um, clubs will be looking to raise, cap raise cash by selling players. So it's difficult. And why is, why is that, do you think? Is that, is that, is that, has that got any connection with the fact that we're, we've seen in recent years big investors like the Glazers, for instance, buying up these clubs, running them into debt? Is, do you think there's a connection there? Yes. I think that that model that came from the States is that when you had a, your typical local club, whether it be Fulham or Manchester or Liverpool, you were running a club based on revenues, recurrent revenues, tickets, beer, sandwiches, and, you, and, and fan base. You had money coming in, and maybe you had a little bit of a credit facility. Manchester United, if you take, a, as, you, as you mentioned, Manchester United has had a nice cushion of cash and now today it's deeply indebted. The only way to get money now is you can't go to the bond market, you go to equity and you get some loyal fan to buy shares. So um, what happens is uh, that was one way to raise cash to pay off debt because 500 million in debt is just way too much for any club. They do not generate that much uh, in one year. It was incredible that in Manchester United's case, I mean they were, they were doing pretty well before the Glazers came in. Suddenly this, this debt came in and, and so do you, in that case it's the, the investor who you know, wants to claim some of the cash back and that's why they're raising the debt. And is that, is, that, is that, I mean we saw that happening throughout a lot of Premier League teams. Uh, and uh, do you think that's healthy overall for, for investment in, in a sport like, like football? It's not healthy in any sport. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to have a salary cap. You mentioned Manchester United, but people may remember Real Madrid. Two times financial difficulties to be bailed out by the government. Uh, and, you know, people can go and look at the, the details of the transaction and start to ask questions. Atletico Madrid. Uh, there's so many teams that um, have lost focus on winning matches, building teams, and have focused more on making money, uh, paying salaries to coaches, paying to GMs, and um, it's long term. It's not. Uh, it's not feasible. You mentioned uh, players there um, uh, th again. Investing in sport, investing whether it's ice hockey, whether it's uh, mm. American football, football rugby, whatever. You know, the players are obviously there. That's a, they, play, they play a key part. What are what are sort of retired players investing in now? What, what's the sort of thing that, that that players are being encouraged to invest in themselves? Well, you have a multitude of uh, investments. When you take a player who gets into the professional entertainment segment, he's making a lot of money. So he's primarily investing himself in in himself. Um, one of the things they like to do, because they have big egos, is like to invest in restaurants and cafe bars and social uh, entertainment. Um, but those who are, have a long-term uh, vision and do prepare themselves for a transition to a second career are looking at more viable investments such as real estate, agriculture, energy, 
um, owning franchises in whether it be McDonald's or Starbucks like uh, Magic Johnson. Uh, but there are only a few of those uh, players who surround themselves with the right people to guide them. In my case, in the beginning, many of the athletes were coming to me trying to get money back. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I was doing initially not only financial planning and explaining to them the whole financial model as a professional athlete, was you would discover that money was missing. A bank had money that they didn't pay them back. Why? An agent did a deal with another company, money disappeared. A financial advisor did this, money disappeared. Uh, contracts were signed. Uh, player didn't realize what he was signing. So players found themselves uh, with a lot of debt, or money being owed to them, all over the place. And then when he tried to recuperate the money, he had no idea on where to start and how to go ahead and who to ask. Um, now, one of the things we were looking at this uh, just prior to the interview starting, and, and you'd noticed about a few key years, 2008, 2009, this shows the uh, January uh, and uh, summer transfers. Obviously, you can see transfers in summer huge compared to January, but there are some interesting figures there in 2008, 2009, and 2011, mm -hmm. and then on to 2013. Again, as I mentioned, this is the Premier League clubs transfer spending uh, window in its millions. Well, a slight anomaly in some of those figures? You know, clubs needed money, uh, so a lot of transfers were done. Uh, 2011, again, interest rates, maybe people, clubs raised debt. But what's interesting about this, that uh, if we go back to one of your previous questions on the side, is why are private banks interested in all of a sudden athletes today as opposed to in the past? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because they finally realize that this money is transparent. It will, uh, under MIFID or any OECD or any other tax regime, it's visible so they don't have a problem of saying, Swiss banking secrecy, uh, you can hide your money. Now the money can come in, taxed at source. And so this is one of the attractive things that banks are looking at, but they're looking at it in the wrong manner. Um, I would say that in this instance, you will, as long as interest rates remain low and, and clubs continue to finance themselves on short-term or long-term debt, you will see the transfer window going up. You'll see more money. Christopher, thanks very much for coming in today and uh, sharing your insight with us there on sport and football in particular. You don't call it soccer, though, do you? you Depends who I'm speaking to. So you call it football with me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Okay, thank you, though. Thank you for having me. Um, that's all from uh, Dukas Copy TV right now. We'll have more interviews uh, for you later, but for now, bye bye.